Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to make some layered succulents in a color pencil tutorial today. And I'm going to be using a really cute stamp set from Darcy's. And look at these cute, cute, cute little succulents and the sentiments in there. They always come up with such funny ones. So I thought this would be a really fun one to do some stuff with. And I thought I'd also show you a little bit about layering because a lot of my color pencil followers don't watch my Copic videos. So I've been told. And I'm going to show you how to make the one of the stamps look like it's behind the other. Really simple to do. I've got it in my Misty. I've stamped out the ones that are in the front. And then this is the stamp that's going to be in the back. So I've stamped the, the one on the right onto a sticky note, cut it out, and then I can stamp this guy. And I'm masking out the stamp that's on the right hand side. And look, they look like there's one in front of the other. How cute is that to make for a little card? With the Misty, the cool thing is if it didn't come out dark enough because it, it didn't match how dark the first stamp came out, I can replace my masks. And I recommend not moving your paper even though they say you can put the paper back. Mine never quite goes back the same way. And then just re-stamp it. And now they both match beautifully. So I'm going to use some colored pencils. These are Prisma color pencils. The numbers are in the upper left corner. And what I've done is stamp the image a couple times because I'm going to do some layering. And the only one that I really need to do the nice coloring for is the top of this plant on the left. So I'm going to do some nice blending with a yellowish green at the top and then a little darker green on the inside and then a deeper green to shade with. And with something like this, the shading would go on the inside at the bottom of each one of those strands of, I don't know, are they called leaves when they're on succulents? Or is that the flower petals? Is it one big flower or is it a leaf? I don't really know. Whatever it is, put your shading way on the inside of it. And I'm going to throw a little bit of color on all the other areas for a specific reason. And I'm just going to do it around the outside edges for the most part. These are the kind of the colors that I plan on using on the layered pieces. But if you turn the card a little bit sideways, I want to make sure that you see a little bit of color underneath. I don't want there to be a weird black and white gap underneath. So I'm just putting some color around the outside edges of this image. And then I'm going to switch over to a piece of scratch paper where I've restamped the images because these are the ones that I'm going to cut out and glue together. And since this was, these are fairly simple shapes to cut out, I thought this would be great for this technique. And notice that the one that I didn't cut out is that one with the spikies. That would be hard to hand cut. So I would recommend not doing that one. <laughs> and I'm going to fussy cut each one of them but I'm gonna take this top part off of this uh, the one that I'm coloring now that I'm using a couple of different teal colors to create the shading getting darker and darker toward the inside on each one of my little petals or leaves or whatever we've decided they're called and I'm gonna cut that portion out and glue it and layer it on top of other portions so you kind of have to think a little bit when you're doing a card like this to plan out how many layers you want and which parts are going to layer the best and how you're going to cut them out on top of each other. And you'll see how that plays out when I get to that portion, but I'm going to get all my coloring done here first. You could also use some Gamsol or baby oil to do some magic color pencil techniques on this to make your blending really nice, but I'm just going to let the pencil show because I like the texture of the pencil. The, this one, I'm going to end up cutting out um, potentially a little bit of that top section. So I just put a little bit of that teal color for the plant so it doesn't show underneath. You know, like you don't see anything underneath. Um, then I'm going to do my whole coloring of the pot itself. And there's a lot of different ways you could do these pots. You could even color them with fun patterns on them and stuff. And that would be an interesting way to go, but I'm just going to use a solid kind of terracotta color on one of them, on this one, and then add some shading using a darker color when I'm all finished. But I'm kind of going in there with a very sharp pencil to fill in all the different sections of it. So with the, the paper texture, you often get little white gaps. And if you have a really sharp pencil, you can fill all that in and it can be pretty smooth just using your pencils themselves. And I'll add a little bit of shading to both sides and then a little bit under the lip of the pot and under the lip of where that 
that plant is going to be as well as the the little rope that's around it the little twine I guess you would call it and then I'll have two different colors on my twine and then I'll be ready to move on to the other one so this pot I thought I'd make it more of a reddish color just use a different color for the pot I could have used the same color but since they're going to be kind of one in front of the other I thought it might help to have them be a little bit different than each other and notice that if you're going to be coloring and cutting them out the way I am you could actually just color right outside I was considering scribbling all over it but I thought no this is gonna be on YouTube I can't scribble like a mad person I suppose I could have but somebody might not forgive me somebody will give a thumbs down just because I scribbled outside the lines so I'm gonna finish coloring in this one and add a little bit more shading as well with the same dark brown color and that'll just give me a little bit of dimension around it but not too worried about a ton of it and next I will um, fill in the twine as well now the, the twine notice that I will be using the same two colors that I've used in a bunch of the plants above and that's gonna bring some harmony to the whole thing and that's gonna help to unify the whole image so you can use two of the colors from one of the plants on the other twine you can use them on matchy matchies so you make them all using the same ones a lot of different ways you could approach it but I'm just using those colors so that I end up with the same same colors at least carried across the card now for my adhesive I'm using these power tabs they're very very thin profile so you can make a couple layers with them without adding a huge amount to your card itself and I've trimmed them out so I'm gonna do the pot first on this left one so now it's going to have one layer in front with the the greens down below it so that's going to look like the, the greens are in the back and then I've cut this one out and I've, I'm put I have put if I can speak two of the power tabs on it but I've cut the top I didn't want to fussy cut that thing twice I thought that would be silly so I just cut a little shape around it so that it will have something underneath of it to glue the top to. You could just cut it off entirely, but then you'd have to put double adhesive or something to make it pop forward. So I'm putting my adhesive then sticking it right onto that little nub that I cut. And then I didn't have to fussy cut that whole thing again. But then I end up with these really cool layers on my card and I get this really cool dimension. And it's really not very thick when you're looking at it in general. So the post office shouldn't even get too mad as long as you don't use more than like two layers of this Then it's usually pretty good going through the post office without costing extra moolah And I've added it onto a I trimmed my panel out with a dotted Die with a little stitching around it to make it a little bit more interesting and then plopped it onto a white card so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click that like button and all the supplies, as always, are listed in the description down below, as well as over on my blog. Pinnable images are there so you can remember what you saw. And I will see you guys later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.